cocaine hidden in lingerie and dog crates, 1,500 kilogram shipments, Medellin drug lord Griselda Blanco managed to conceal both drugs and cash from authorities, but you'll be shocked to know how much she really accumulated during her lifetime. Before she was gunned down in a public hit in her hometown on September 3, 2012, Griselda Blanco was profiting from the booming cocaine trade that permeated the 1970s and 1980s. After setting up a network that moved massive amounts of the stimulant across the sea from Colombia and through a vast United States distribution chain, she began to see the fruits of her labors. Blanco kept her money-making enterprise moving largely due to her ruthless hits on enemies. According to Britannica, it was Blanco's ruthlessness that paved the way for the cocaine cowboy wars, a violent era that began in the late 1970s. She had no qualms ordering hits in public areas during the day, including a local mall. When her foes began to order hits on her, she moved to the United States. But her reign of terror soon came to an end when she was arrested in 1985 and sentenced to 20 years in prison. While she managed to secure an early release, she was ultimately deported to Colombia, where she was later killed. Blanco is believed to be behind up to 200 murders, and she took her savagely earned blood money and funneled it into real estate. So just how did Griselda Blanco earn so much money, and what was she worth at the peak of her operation? The answer might surprise you. She basically invented bringing cocaine from South America and into the United States. The drug operation that Blanco used to accumulate her vast wealth was clearly both wide-reaching and profitable. Blanco operated her cocaine smuggling operation out of New York City. In one particular example of her cunning, Blanco would apparently have her lingerie fitted with secret compartments that were used to conceal drugs. Speaking to The Real Narcos podcast, historian Elaine Carey went into more detail about the revolutionary smuggling methods that drove Blanco's massive empire, saying, they were the right people at the right time with the right product. It wasn't just coming in on people's bodies, it was also coming in false bags, suitcases, and dog crates. But according to Carey, it was customized lingerie that was particularly important for the operation, as she explained. They were also creating garments that would facilitate this, such as specialized brassieres and girdles and things like that, where they could actually enhance the female figure. These garments would allow for the drugs to be more smoothed around the body, and it would just look like a woman's natural figure. According to Noiser, Blanco smugglers could easily board flights with their drugs hiding in plain sight. The outlet claims that each specially fitted bra could hold one kilogram of cocaine, which at the time amounted to approximately $10,000 in profit. Before her death, celebrity net worth estimated that Griselda Blanco owned approximately $500 million worth of property. In the wake of her death, Colombian federal law enforcement seized four properties that amounted to around $118.7 million. Though her wealth appeared to have declined in her later years, signs of her life of luxury still followed her after her death. Notably, her casket bears golden arabesque designs, echoing the billions of dollars that she built throughout her life. Per The Guardian, Blanco was reportedly raking in tens of millions of dollars monthly from her enterprise, which was known to make drug shipments that exceeded 1,500 kilograms. At her peak, celebrity net worth valued her at an astounding $2 billion and claimed that she made up to $80 million per month through her business. As is expected from a former cartel drug lord, Blanco was believed to have held vastly more properties than were on the books, hundreds of which are rumored to never have been discovered by law enforcement. Speaking to El País, a Colombian police officer addressed Blanco's post-prison wealth amid rumors that she was struggling financially, saying, Poor? Listen to this. You and I are poor. She went around driving her Mazdita and collecting the money from the leases and the property she still owned. She was also selling a building for 1.5 million pesos. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about true crime are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.